Hey everyone, real quick before I get to the Alani guide, I wanted to plug my Patreon really quick, which is uh, newly launched. This is a new way you can support me if you'd like to. Uh, you can connect with me more personally to suggest things about my channel, about my streams, whatever you want to do. So um, the link is in the description if you want to support me, so thanks a lot. Hey everyone, it's Feral here with another mount guide. Today I'm finally doing my Thundering Ruby Cloud Serpent guide, which I've been talking about for months on my stream at this point. I'm going to teach you step by step how I personally farm this mount solo, because I am aware of the wolf farming method that you can do in a group, but if you have no friends like me, this should be the guide for you. So the Thundering Ruby Cloud Serpent is dropped by a mob named Alani, which is a level 92 Cloud Serpent that often patrols around the Vale of Eternal Blossoms in Pandaria. She spawns very often, and usually patrols for about 30 to 40 minutes before despawning. I'm not sure how long she's down, but it's like 45 minutes or so, it's not very long. She has an ability on her called Nimbus Shroud that makes her immune to all forms of damage and aggro, so she can't be killed right away for her mount. However, she is made vulnerable by something called a Sky Crystal, which is created by combining 10 Sky Shards. So the Sky Shards are what we're farming here. There are about a 1 in 1,000 drop rate from any mob in the Vale of Eternal Blossoms, which means you're going to be killing a ton of Mogu. So I'm going to show you guys exactly how I personally farm Sky Shards. This is kind of niche because I use my Feral Druid and I have certain legendaries going on, but you can use pretty much any speed class, but let me just show you my shut up. My, move, my shut up. My little shut up. So this is my shut up. I use the Lufa Wrappings, which increases the range of my Thrash by 75%. And I also use Echo Wraith, creative, creator of worlds. It doesn't really create worlds, it just crushes them because you hate to open this legendary. Anyway, it's pretty good for Alani farming because it increases the uh, range of my Astral Affinity by 75% or something. It's ridiculous. It makes my Thrash ginormous, as you can see here. I'm just hitting every mob in Vale at this point. This is amazing. The only talents you should care about is uh, Lunar Inspiration, which gives you the castable Moonfire in cat form. It's kind of nice if there's a pesky mob that's out of range of your ginormous thrash. And Astral Affinity, which is what you really need to increase your thrash range with Echo Wraith. So the add-on that you're seeing in my chat window and when I loot a Sky Shard is called Rarity. This is a really nice handy add-on. You can use it for pretty much everything. And uh, make sure to open up the window and select repeatable or else it'll only track one of your sky shards and you want it to track all of them. So here are the four spots that I really farm. These are where most of the mogu are and some of them have the wolves running through them and the wolves have a higher drop rate, I think, something like that. So you can pause the video, take a look at this map, see where it is. And I'm going to show you guys where all these spots are. So this is the 3053 spot. This is a large mogu camp. Make sure to hit all the guys on the perimeter too, because there are quite a few. This is the 2528 spot. There are a bunch of mogu camps around this tiny miniature lake thing. Uh, make sure to go up the ramp too, because there's mogu up there. And on the other side, there are also more mogu. So this is kind of a wider spread area. Not as wide as the other, uh, the first one though. This is the 1234 spot. This one is my personal favorite, just because there are so many mobs here. This is kind of highly contested on higher population realms, so kill first and then loot later, in my opinion. And the final one is the 2917 one. This one is up near the mountains. There are plenty of mogu here. Make sure to get uh, both of the big three camps, because it's got a very high density of mobs there as well. The only two things of note that drop from these mobs are sky shards and guolai cash keys. Make sure to pick these up because they allow you to access Guolai caches, which have a very small chance of containing Sky Shards. For me, it seemed to be about 1-2%. to 2 I get at least half of my Sky Shards from these caches, so don't sleep on them. They look kind of pointy anyway. Once you have all 10 Sky Shards, just right click on it to make a Sky Crystal. And once you have the Sky Crystal, you can use it to pull Alani and kill her and loot her mount. This mount can be shared with five people in a group. Make sure not to have it in raid or only one will drop. And each person gets the mount, so it's kind of a cool gift for friends if you want to grind it out for your friends. Make sure not to kill her too fast. I once had a instance where I pulled her. I had five people in the group and my neck, the hidden satyr enchant, killed her. So you might want to strip down and just punch her to death. But that's kind of extreme, but it's fun to see a naked night elf punching Alani to death. And that pretty much covers everything. If you're going at top speed and farming pretty consistently and don't have competition, this farm can be anywhere from like four to eight hours, or if you get super lucky and loot it like 
insanely fast. Get all 10 sky shards from 10 different mobs. First of all, go buy a lottery ticket. And second of all, it can it can seriously vary. Like, I know I had a set that was two hours because I had like five that dropped 10 minutes apart. And then I had one where I had like 3,000 kills between every single one of my sky shards. So just keep at it. They do drop and sometimes they'll drop unexpectedly and do loot those caches. So there you go. Best of luck on your Sky Shard farming journey, and have a good one!